Hello, Corruptors, and welcome to Steven's review of the Ultra Act Alien Bolton. It is the best Ultra Act for you. You should buy it. You will now be presented with reasons why you should add it to your collection. Um, thanks, Bolton. You actually look pretty good. The paint application on him is nicely done, and the sculpting is equally as nice. Honestly, I'm impressed with this figure. Now, I know it's a reviewer cliche, but just look at the detail on the head. Nicely sculpted ridges, precisely applied red paint, and the compound eye effect is great. I could probably spend 10 minutes discussing all of the nice details which can be found here. The arms are, well, pretty average, but the claws are fantastic. A nice silver paint application with the brown shading closer to where it attaches to the arm, as you can see there. But if you open them up, there's even details inside of the claws. You can see those very, very small, precisely applied blue paint dots. That's very impressive. The chest, there are some nice folds to be found there which you would probably find just from the suit, but there's a nice surprise. If you open up the chest plates, you'll see that these bright silver reflectors are a nice touch. On the back side, the Balton booty has some great looking ridges and folds, and the paint isn't sloppy at all. You can even see hints of blue dry brushing right along here, which is a nice subtle touch. And finally, this awesome stripe pattern going on from the waist down to the feet is marvelous. I'm really impressed with the application for this. So, yeah, I have to say this figure is indeed pretty stunning. Probably the best quality of this figure. And moving right along to articulation, Balton is very great in some aspects, but leaves a lot to be desired in others. For an example, the neck articulation. It is a ball joint, but that is the extent of the movement, so not too much there. The shoulders are on a ball joint, so you can spin the arms around just like so. Be careful though, because it may scrape against the lower portion of the head around the neck area. Don't want to scratch any paint. And also hidden in the shoulders is a hinge, so this way you can get him to raise his arms up about that much. That's about it. Plugging into the bicep is a ball joint. So you can spin the lower portion of Balton's arms around, like a normal bicep swivel. And then, at the elbow, there is a double hinge. So great range of movement there. You can touch the claws together if you really want to. And then, at the wrist, where the claw attaches to the forearm, I guess you would say, there is a ball joint. You can get a little bit of movement there. Then, the claw itself is hinged you can see there. Opens and closes. Moving along, the reflector, as you saw before, opens up on a hinge. Very simplistic. And then, right here, this portion of the chest, the ab crunch, is on a ball joint. Fairly movable. You can get some nice rocking movement out of that, which is cool. That's where the majority of your movement for getting ball time to swing around and look is going to be. Now, the waist... A um, little bit of a swivel. Not too much. Might as well not even have any articulation there at all. Moving down, hips. Um, normal Ultra Act style in that there is a pull-down hinge, there is a ball joint which plugs into the thigh, and then there is a piece of sculpt in the thigh which is attached on the swivel. So this way you can get some pretty sweet movement out of that. But do note, Ball Town's booty is going to block articulation for moving the leg backwards, because if you move too hard, you can see this piece might break off. So be careful with that. Knees, double hinge, as you can see. Looks like it's in a performance line. Ankles, hinge, as you can see here. And they're plugged in. So you get a swivel movement for some pretty awesome ankle rocker movement. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Then finally, toe hinge. Or is it? No, it's actually a ball joint. So if you want to spin Balton's toe around for some reason, you're able to do it. 
Next up would be the accessories, and truth be told, we don't get too much with this alien. First up, we get six mini Baltan here, and they are all connected together here on this runner. I believe the technical term is sort of like model pieces. They're not painted, but they have some pretty good detail, as you can see here. Um, I haven't really taken them off because they're nice looking, but they're kind of boring, to be honest. I'm not sure if they can stand up on their own, but you know what? It is a nice touch. If you're looking for Mini Ball 10, though, I would suggest picking up some of the candy toy ones that were released in early 2015. They're a nice substitute. And finally, for the accessories, we get these two effect parts. A lot of people have been complaining that they're the wrong color, but to be perfectly honest with you, it seems like it doesn't even have a technical name. Why? On Bandai's official page for this figure, it's listed as Lightning Bullets. Translation from Japanese to English. I've also heard them called Destruction Bullets. And just general flashes. So, for the purposes of this review, I'm just going to call them Crab Blasts of Doom. Why? Because it's my review and not yours. So, they're translucent orange and they have these little plastic pegs down here, as you can see. And that is to clip them into the claws. And it's very easy to do it. And here's how. Step one, open claw. Step two, grab the crab blast. Step three, line up the little plastic pieces with the inside of the claw. Step four, push, and there you go. Now Baltan can actually attack. And wrapping up with scaling, you'll be surprised to find that Baltan is actually about the size of the Ultras in the line. First up, here's a comparison with some of NECA's Pacific Rim figures. Now some SH Monster Arts. Moving right along, here it is alongside some Ultras in the line, Renewals to be specific. And finally, where it would be most at home alongside some of the other Kaiju. So, like I said, it's about the size of your average Ultra in the line. So, buy it now, skip it, or wait for a sale. It looks great with detailed paint apps with nice sculpting to go along with it. Articulation-wise, what it does, it does well, but what it doesn't, well, it sucks. Accessories are appreciated, but for some, they're just simply better than nothing. Overall, fans of Baltan will want to get this, while those who don't really care for the character, they can sleep easy knowing that it's climbing in the aftermarket. About 7,000 yen or more now. If you can score it for about 50 bucks or less, it's a pretty solid buy. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and be sure to give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you haven't. If you'd like to view some of my other videos, go ahead and click on the pictures in this video and you'll be taken right to them. I've hand selected them just for you. Be sure to check the description for both more information and some links to help me out, including a link to my Patreon. Thanks again and I'll see you next time.